we're learning, you know, on a weekly or daily basis uh, on all of the aspects of the airship, including the, uh, the sort of the topic of this webinar, which is kind of how to get started and, and where to get started. And, you know, a lot of people are, I think a lot of people are really into this concept. It's, it's a logical thing. But um, how do you get started with, with your resources? And so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, we're sitting here, uh, most, if you've logged on to this, you're probably uh, aware of the fact that we have the Phoenix Earthship, which was kind of our flagship of uh, illustrating the six systems, uh, the six aspects of the Earthship concept. We're sitting in here, tilapia are over here, uh, eating their food that I just put on the top of the water. The birds are flying around and the plants are growing. And the building is, uh, we got about a foot of snow on the ground outside and the building is toasty. Uh, it's a botanical gardens. It's a, it's a biosphere essentially. Uh, it's a showpiece, but we can take these, uh, the aspects of this that we have demonstrated. And one of the things we're doing is trying to bring every aspect of this showpiece earthship into the realm of the standard or almost generic if you want to use that word earthship and making it available to people and i'd like to point out a few things here i'd like to point out that that at this point and i can show you a few pictures throughout the conversation here uh, we have, we have what we call now, we always have a current favorite model that is uh, available to the public. And our current favorite, mo favorite model we call the Global Airship. And uh, we really thought we had arrived with that. Uh, we always think we've arrived, but we never do. Uh, we thought we had arrived because we got all of the systems, all of the all the aspects of it working. To review those, I'm always hammering those six points. It's thermal solar heating and cooling. It's electricity from the wind and sun. It's harvesting water from the sky, from rain and snow melt. It's on-site contained uh, sewage treatment, and it's building with garbage or recycled materials, and it's food. Those are the six issues that every government, every society, every city is facing, we're trying to address all of those in this Earthship concept. Well, it's taken us decades, we're on our fourth decade, or, you know, done with our fourth decade, we're going to our fifth decade on this. Uh, hopefully I last a little while longer. Um, we're, we're um, on our, in our fourth decade beyond it, and, and we have a, a product that we call the global earthship that is adaptable to any climate almost on the planet and 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 what I mean by I thought we had arrived is that we finally after all these years got this thing uh, so that it's pretty much the same price as conventional housing of an equivalent quality and so you know it's not the cheapest house in the world and it's not the most expensive. When you get your standard subdivision, good quality home out there, uh, well insulated and thermal glass and everything, and a good substantial home, the Earthship Global Model costs about the same. Uh, so in that respect, uh, we thought we had arrived because there is still a radical savings in the, in, a, in a security in that you don't have to deal with uh, utility bills. Uh, power, water, or sewage, which are constantly going up and becoming a little flaky in terms of their uh, availability. So we thought we had arrived with this global model, and um, w when we got it to the point where we could make it available to people for the same price as uh, a conventional house of the same quality. Well, when we got there, shortly after our celebration of thinking we arrived, uh, the economic crisis hit within you know the last couple of years, and we see that housing in general, conventional or otherwise, is all too expensive. So now our effort is to try and make this more make housing in general, shelter, uh, accommodations for people in general, come up with concepts in addition to these 
sustainable carbon zero concepts that we've already been proving here, we're trying to come up with uh, how to make this way more affordable so that when the economy crashes, you're not losing your home. Because whether it's an earthship or a conventional home, or a carbon zero home, or a carbon big carbon footprint home, if you lose it in an economic crisis, that's that's not what should be happening. It is our feeling that the sustenance of people, the the that which keeps them alive, really, power, water, sewage, food, you know, shelter, those things are kind of a God-given right, and they should not be subject to the economy. And we're trying to make that happen now. And that is a that means we're not fighting politics. We're not fighting the economy monster. We're trying to uh, kind of work in an Aikido fashion and slither through the cracks and make this available sort of uh, in spite of all of these situations with economy, politics, uh, uh, corporations, you know, um, uh, the whole situation that really runs things, oil. Uh, we're trying to, I, I fought that stuff and lost. You know, you, you're going to lose if you're one person or one little outfit against an entire corporate concept. Uh, or the same with a political concept. We, we did fight and we did lose. Uh, we don't fight anymore. We, we, we work through it, around it. Uh, within it, uh, sort of like a virus, you know, they don't even know we're here in certain ways. We're giving them what they want, uh, as at the same time we're, you know, growing from uh, their own blood cells, so to speak. So we are playing that game, but the, the point I'm making here is that we, we did think we had it made when we came up with a a model of the earthship that was priced in the same range as conventional housing, and then we realized that conventional housing is priced just out of the ballpark of so many people on the planet that it's just not it's not relevant unless we've got something that people can have and not lose in an economic crisis. So we're playing all kinds of games. I might get into some of it. Uh, they're called village ecologies, where we take this technology into a village concept and. Uh, and rather than having to come up with 300 grand and a whole lot of approvals, uh, you trade yourself, your, your, your work, your abilities for living. And it's a, it's a weekly thing. Every week you provide some of yourself to this village ecology, uh, this village, and every week you get to stay there. And it's not based on money. It does require money. I mean, money is going to be an issue. We're not going to get rid of money. But I'm trying to decrease the power of money. In other words, you're not going to get rid of politics, but I'm trying to de decrease the power of it. And uh, there's a lot of things you're not going to get rid of. Corporations. Uh, I'm not trying to get rid of corporations. I'm trying to decrease the power of them. By decrease the power of them, I mean the power they have over me, the power they have over people. Uh, they, uh, they're there. You know, they're going to be around. We're not going to try to annihilate, eliminate, or exterminate all these things that that we think are, are really uh, breeding the problems that we have, we're simply trying to create a life in spite of them, sort of like mold, algae, uh, uh, virus, bacteria. We're slipping into those concepts to try and exist as barnacles on the whale of ridiculousness you know, in our world. And it um, seems to be working to some extent, but the bottom line is, one of the things we have seen here in the, in the uh, uh, immediate uh, the immediate history of what we've been doing is that housing in general costs too much, and we're trying to address ways to bring this to that level, to the level that people don't have to invest 300 grand.